Terror. Must sterilize. <laughs> sterilize. <laughs> Hello there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Doug and I received a package today. Isn't that wonderful? This one I've been anticipating is, well, I'm going to call it Nomad. And you may wonder about those Star Trek titles uh, to begin this, uh, this fountain pen review and why I've called the Wingsung 601A Nomad. And that's because this pen is a blend of two pens in my, in my estimation. It is the blend of the Parker 51 and the Schaefer Triumph. And so, in my mind, it's like two probes that met in deep space and merged somehow, just like this. Somehow they merged, repaired each other, became one. This is Nomad. Nomad. I am Nomad. Nomad. All right, Nomad. 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 Nomad, come here. Nomad. Nomad. Then it isn't Nomad. 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 Stop. Nomad, stop! What happened? Nomad. Nomad. Undoubtedly. I am Nomad. No, you're not Nomad. You're an alien machine. Error. Error. So without further ado, let's take a look at this Wingsong 601A. Okay, let's unbox this puppy. Oh yeah, a box. Interesting that it uh, it went from China to Toronto, and from Toronto it went to Vancouver, and from Vancouver it went to Edmonton, and then it came to Calgary. That's efficiency for you. And as always, I'm going to speed this up for you. down to one box and this is the first Wingsong box that I received that wasn't crushed beyond all recognition so let's see what's in this box well, it looks like we have some instructions and a pen and some kind of a sleeve and there's the pen this is uh, more information than I've ever gotten a wing song before. And let's see. No, I can't read Chinese. It says uh, wing song something rather. It says fountain pen. I'm a fountain pen. Yes, it says fountain pen here. So wing song super quality. Thank you for choosing Wing Sung. Uh, please don't, um, yeah, don't uh, don't use if you're a ghost. I don't know. And filling instructions. It says uh, Wing Sung pen filling instructions. One cap, two feed. Well, that's good. It has a. a disassembly for all the different parts and then it has filling instructions and it has instructions for silicone greasing the piston oh yes so this looks like a converter doesn't it looks like a converter it's not it is a little tube of silicone grease of course I already have a three lifetime supply of silicone grease in that I have three bottles of this stuff but that's a nice add-on let's see the pen now now let's get our our crinkly ASMR moment a wing song now this is in that burgundy color I did a review recently of um, a friend's pen who loaned it to me for the review. It was a um, 
late seventies, early eighties, uh, Schaefer, uh, GT Targa, something like that. And it had, uh, a color just like this. And I was attracted to the look of that burgundy with the gold and especially the wave work on that cap. It's beautiful, isn't it? So what I'm going to do with this pen, I've been waiting for this for a while and I've prepared all kinds of things. I'm going to go over the parts and features of the pen. I'm going to look at it for what I like, what I don't like. I'm going to do some writing samples. I'm going to give you some measurements and some dimensions and some size comparisons. And I'm going to do a little history of the two pens that I think have inspired this pen. That's the Parker 51 and the Schaefer uh, Triumph. And there's some interesting juxtaposition of history of those two companies and one gentleman named Wing, which is fascinating. Here's a Wing Sung pen, which merges those two pens between Parker and Schaefer, and they have history together. Not the same Wing, I don't think. But uh, I'm also going to uh, do an evaluation. But first, I'm going to uh, clean this pen out, and I'm going to ink it up, and we'll be back with some parts and features of the pen. Okay, I'm back. I've uh, cleaned out the pen, a little uh, soap and water, ran it through, and uh, dried it out, and I've inked it up. And I chose a Roshizuku Kanpeki, my favorite ink of all. So let's take a better look at this pen. Uh, starting from the finial, the cap finial, this is a, uh, a blue type jewel that's on here. I'm sure it's uh, some kind of plastic or acrylic. We have the Parker Arrow type clip, which is seems to be fairly rigid and uh, serviceable. And of course the, the cap itself has this lovely wave pattern, which really attracted me to this pen. The uh, 601 without the A comes with a sort of standard brushed uh, stainless steel kind of a look. Um, then on the cap band, it says on the front here, if I can focus in, it says Wing Sung in Chinese, 601A. And then on the back, it says Made in China. And then we go down to the body, which is uh, form fit to the cap very, very sleekly. So there's hardly anything there. And it is a tapered shape um, down to the end of the barrel. Uh, you can feel that division between the uh, blind cap and the body just slightly. If you really look, you feel for it. If you really look for it, you can see it but it is, for all intents and purposes, invisible. So if you didn't know that that blind cap was there, you wouldn't know, would you? And it un just unscrews like that. And there is your vacuumatic pump filler. Now, this is not like the original Parker 51 vacuumatic. It is a, I'd say, a modern update to that uh, classic kind of filler. It's very simple. You just put the pen in ink and pump it three or four times. I pumped it until I, all the air bubbles stopped. And um, then I got, I think I've got a, a, a completely full fill out of the pen. And at the bottom, there is another gold band and that blue jewel. Overall, a very sleek looking, beautiful pen. It has a slip cap, which has this clutch mechanism, clutch ring, and there's a clutch mechanism that was um, invented by Parker back in 1939 and still works today. And it seems to uh, hold that cap 
quite secure. I would think that that's airtight. But what metals are there, I'm not sure. Let's see if we can get some light in here. Get onto the camera here. So it looks like there's a, there's the clutch ring, but I don't see any other, there might be a slip cap in there. It's hard to tell. It looks like a little piece of plastic right there. That might just seal off that, that conical shaped section. So does the pen post? It posts very securely, very deeply, and very satisfyingly. I think it's one of the nicest features of this pen when it sort of goes along with the style, the design of the original Parker 51 that that cap posts. This, pap, uh, this uh, cap is um, a little bit heavier than the rest of the body, so it does back weight the pen. Well, it doesn't really back weight. It balances the pen, I think. It feels better in the hand posted to me than unposted but you can certainly write with it's very light when you hold the pen like this let's take a look at the body here we have a uh, shape that goes from the tapering at one end increases towards the, uh, the widest part in the center of the body and then tapers completely uninterrupted all the way down to the point this is one of the elegant features of this, of the design of this pen. It just looks so sleek. And of course the original Parker 51 has a hooded nib, so it all goes all the way down and all you see is the little tip of the, of the nib poking out from that hood. So that um, a regular version of this would have that colored section all the way down to that tip. But this pen, the 601A has the Triumph type of nib from Schaefer attached to the end. Of course, this is not a Schaefer. This is a Wingsung, and it says Made in China on the nib, and it has Chinese characters, which I assume are Wingsung, and it's a two-tone nib with the same kind of pattern, that heart-shaped pattern there that the original Schaefer had as well. It's a completely tubular type of um, nib and it houses the round shaped feed and there's some interesting history behind that feed as well. It's the source of a potential lawsuit between Schaefer and Parker back in 1941, 42, something like that, uh, which I'll get into in the history section. That tapered section all the way up to the body, that means you can write with this pen in any place. That clutch ring, you can't feel that really at all. So you can write with this down here, you can write with it back here, you can write with it posted or unposted lost side of my cap there we go and so I think you'll find a, a favorable writing position with this pen uh, anywhere the one thing is that it is very slim of course it's a very slim pen so if you like thicker sections um, then this pen might not be for you but uh, it does feel very nice in the hand um, I'm not sure that I will be writing with this pen. I let my wife take a look at it, and uh, I think I don't own it anymore. She just fell in love with it. She said it's, uh, it's too feminine looking for you to have. Well, just because I'm a guy doesn't mean I don't like shiny. I love shiny. But I think she's probably going to end up with this in her stocking for Christmas. So again, to fill this pen, and I overlooked one other feature here. This is, uh, you can get this pen with or without this ink, ink window here. 
and you can see that I almost, I'm almost full on this pen. And that really pleased me, actually, because I, I, after I'd cleaned it out and dried it up, I took the blind cap off, I put it in my bottle of Iroshizuku, uh, right down to the, the little tip down the bottom, so the section was completely immersed in ink. And I pumped this, you know, three or four times, just sort of steadily, until I saw no more bubbles happening. And I think I've got almost a full fill, which is very nice. Now, I don't know how much ink that takes, but uh, it's uh, probably something in the range of, I'd say, two milliliters, something like that. That's my guess. And then, of course, you just put the blind cap back on again. Now, when I did clean out the pen, I did um, disassemble it just to see how easy it was. This pen, in some configurations, I've seen some people unbox these, and it comes with a little tool. And you can get the little tool that's this little plastic thing uh, that fits over this uh, six-sided nut, plastic nut. One, two, three, yeah, six-sided nut. Um, and allows you to unscrew that little bit. But um, again, be very careful with this. If you put some rubber band around it or something like that, because this is plastic and these are uh, metal pliers. But I just touched this just a very, very lightly and gave it a light turn without gouging the plastic at all. And it released that nut very, very easily. And then when I put it back, I just gave it a little bit of a touch. So I'm not damaging that plastic at all. But if in doubt, get that little plastic piece to help you disassemble the pen. It was easy to slide out the piston and to uh, dry out the inside of the pen and silicone up that piston. Now, this is where this vacuum, uh, vacuum fill pen is a little bit different. You know, let's look at the documentation that came with it. You can see the parts. Uh, these parts here are part of the piston. It's a double ring piston. Um, and this, this collar here is the, that's where the six sided nut is. And there's the piston rod and there's a spring in here as well. And, uh, when you push that down, the piston goes down now. Um, and every time you pump it, it creates a vacuum and you get more and more ink into the, uh, the chamber. The original design was a rubber sort of gasket, uh, plunger that uh, extended and and retract and extended and retract. And those were prone to, because it was made out of rubber back in the day, those were prone to uh, cracking and, uh, and rotting and so forth inside the pen. So the modern version of that is a plastic piston. And uh, I think that will probably last quite a long time. I've got to say that with all, I've got a vacuum filler, I've got a uh, bulk filler, uh, I've got eyedroppers um, and cartridge converters, of course. I, I got to say that this is the simplest and easiest filling of a pen that I've experienced so far. Uh, it was uh, really quite nice to be able to open up the, the bottle, pump it four times, wipe it off, wipe the nib off, put the ink away and start to write. So I'm going to uh, show you some size comparisons and some measurements, and then we'll come back with a writing sample. Okay, I'm back with a writing sample here with the Wingsung 601A. I'm going to write with this pen posted. Here we are. This is a fine nib. And the ink is Hiroshizuku Con 
Pecky. Let's listen to this pin. So, you might be able to hear that. Uh, I would say that it is smooth now. It uh, has what I would call a toothiness in terms of feedback. Uh, you might like that, you might not. Uh, it writes, when it first out of the box, it was not very good. Um, I'm afraid I, I thought, oh dear, this is going to be a dud. Uh, but I looked at the uh, tines. Because this is a, a conical nib, the, there's not much there to work with. The, um, the little tip of the, of the nib is all you have to work with. And because it's a fine, it's very, very small. So there, there isn't a lot to try to adjust, uh, but I noticed that the tines were slightly out of alignment. So generally what I do is I put my thumbnail on one side, uh, whichever side is down, and give it a gentle push. Well, again, without a lot of purchase spots on there, I pushed on it and my thumbnail went right through the two tines and they went like that. Um, and I thought, oh crap. I've just sprung the nib. So I worked on it for about, gee, 15, 20 minutes to try to get those nibs back together again. They were spread quite wide apart. I could see daylight between the two tines. So I, I squeezed on these sections right here, the, the little shoulders of this nib, and all the time thinking that what was going to happen was I'd have to wait another couple of weeks for these nibs to come from China. You can get these fairly cheap on uh, eBay replacements. Um, but I was able to get some pressure on those tines and get them back together again. And then I adjusted them to the point where I felt like they were visually any, anyway, under a magnifying glass, they were as together as they were going to be. And then I micromeshed them quite a bit. Uh, lots of figure eights, uh, figure eights up and down, circles back and forth like that figure eights this way, um, strokes up, strokes up, strokes up, strokes down, strokes down. And then I wrote my signature on top of each other, on top of itself in a pool of ink. Um, for about uh, 10 minutes or so, I kept checking it all the way along as a, to feel that toothiness go away. Now the toothiness has never gone away, but it is smooth. And the upshot of my thumbnail going through that, that nib is that it opened those tines up quite substantially and we now have a very wet pen which i love this is great so look at this so there's this is very stiff again one of the reasons that it it uh, splayed out on me was because it's so stiff there's no line variation whatsoever it's a little bit toothier in this direction, so I might micromesh it a little bit more. Um, let's see about reverse writing. It's very fine. It's a little bit um, toothier than the other way around, but this is one of the nicest re reverse writing experiences I've had. Um, and in terms of the feed keeping up, it's uh, very, very good. So, um, right out of the box, it was distressing. And of course, I've never worked on a nib like this before, so I was in unknown territory. But it came back very nicely for me. Uh, I think my wife is going to enjoy writing with this pen. 
Uh, so before she gets her hands on it, I'm going to uh, write with it for a day or so. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do my evaluation of this pen. And we'll see you in a bit. Since this Wingsung 601A is a clear homage to the Parker 51, with the exception of the nib, which is a clear homage to the Schaefer Triumph nib, I thought it would be interesting to some to explore the histories of both the Parker 51 and the Schaefer Triumph. If history bores you, or I bore you, then please use the timestamps in the description to move on past this historical diversion. Those of you still with me, thank you. If you have any experience with fountain pens, you'll already know that both Parker and Schaefer were giants in the writing instrument business since the early part of the last century. Parker was founded in 1888 and Schaefer in 1912. Both companies were fierce competitors. Just before the Second World War in 1939, Parker designed a new pen with a revolutionary new design they called the Parker 51. It was called the Parker 51 because that was the 51st year they were in business, and the number 51 was understood in many other languages without translation. The pen had a number of innovative new features and designs. The nib was hooded, and the entire pen shape was streamlined and elegant. The cap slipped on and off with a new clutch design, so the curve of the entire pen was uninterrupted and sleek, tapering from the tip of the nib to the end of the body. The filling mechanism was the Parker Vacumatic, which was a small diaphragm pump that sucked ink into a sack by pumping a button under the blind cap. The redesigned hooded nib and ink collector were practical innovations. The hooded design protects the nib from drying out, and in combination with Parker's new quick-drying ink, dubbed the 51, the pen design was a step forward in fountain pen technology. This hooded nib and ink collector design was not original to Parker, however, having been designed by inventor Russell T. Wing in 1938. Parker bought the design from Wing and released the newly designed pen in 1941. The Parker 51, even though introduced just at the moment the U.S. entered the Second World War, went on to become the largest selling fountain pen design in the history of fountain pens. For its part, Schaefer introduced a new nib design with the Schaefer Triumph in 1942. The feed system of its unique conical nib was based on Wing's 1938 design, which Parker owned. Parker promptly sued Schaefer for copyright infringement, and in 1943, Schaefer settled with Parker and Wing for $25,000 and royalties. So in 1943, Parker, Wing, and Schaefer came to an agreement regarding design elements shared by the Parker 51 and the Schaefer Triumph, and invented by Wing. Seventy-six years later, I am reviewing a pen made by Wing Sung, that puts together the Parker 51 with the nib of the Schaefer Triumph. You could say the two pens merged into an entirely new pen. Not a Franken pen, but a Nomad pen. Okay, it's been a couple of days, and I've written with this pen uh, a bit, a few hours, and I'm ready to do my evaluation. Of course, my evaluation procedure criteria is design and build, writing and feel, the overall look, and the overall value of the pen. Each one of these categories is out of four. A four is perfect score, a three is above average, two is a pass, one is a fail, and zero is an absolute no-show right off. So, in terms of design and build, this design, of course, is taken from the Parker 51 and the nib, of course, from uh, Schaefer, uh, from, uh, and also copied by Hero, which I believe is what Wing Song used to be called, or, the, or they used to be that company. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. However, the addition of a 
an ink window right here. And the, um, the piston instead of the uh, diaphragm in the filling system, plus the easy ability to disassemble to clean this pen, are great, in, um, great in design enhancements in my opinion. The build is excellent as the pen feels flawless. The nib did not write, and although it does now, it feels fragile as if, uh, if I pushed it a bit, it might explode on me. So I'm thinking that might be my fault that I, I pushed it beyond its limits. I've actually uh, ordered another uh, nib for this on eBay. Um, this one's writing okay, but I'm worried about it. So I might uh, start again with another one. So in terms of design and build, I'm going to give it a 3.5. In terms of writing, uh, now that it is writing and it's wet and smooth, uh, it's lovely uh, to write, whether it's posted or not. Um, you can grip the pen anywhere. Um, it is uh, still a bit slim for me. Um, for longer writing sessions, uh, but uh, it does feel very comfortable in the hand. I've uh, I've also found that it will randomly uh, skip on me, and two or three times I've had some hard starts where I had to uh, uh, take the blind cap off and uh, and give it a, a bit of a push, and I basically just let's see if I can get this. Here we go. Uh, I just give it a little bit of a push on here, and you can see that ink start to flow into the feed from underneath. Uh, it's sort of what I do with a converter now and then when a pen will hard start on me. Uh, so it isn't that big of a deal uh, because it's easy to get at and easy to get it started again, and it started right up again. Also, I think that that hard starting has to do with how I uh, sort of savaged this nib a little bit. So it might be partly my bad. So I'm going to give it a 3.5 in terms of writing and feel. In terms of look, well, just look at this pen. This is, this is gorgeous. This is an absolutely beautiful pen. Um, the standard Parker 51 and the Wingsong 601 without the A are pretty pedestrian with their brushed steel caps and their dove gray or pale turquoise bodies. But this pen with uh, the two-toned gold nib, uh, conical triumph style nib, the burgundy body, and the wavy gold of this cap make it a, a definite eye catcher. It, it certainly caught my wife's eye, uh, and it now belongs to her after I'm done with In fact, I said I needed to keep it to do this evaluation, and then you can have it. So it is hers now, and so I'm going to give it a complete four out of four for that. Um, in terms of value, this pen was $22.70 uh, plus uh, $2 shipping U.S. on Etsy for me. Um, this is at the higher end of some of the Chinese pens' costs. However, I consider, I consider it to be a real value for an inexpensive pen. Any writer would be delighted with to receive this pen. Um, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 4 for that, which gives us 15 out of 16, an excellent pen. I also uh, have to commend the filling system on this pen because it's the first time I've ever had one of these, and it is easily the simplest I've found. Uh, three or four pumps uh, with the, the nib and the ink, and you're full of ink and ready to go and you close off the cap. It is just as simple and easy. And I haven't measured it, but I'm thinking you're getting a, a ton of ink in here. Um, so, uh, and then again, uh, if you do have a, a hard start or something like that, that little tug on the, on the piston gets it, the ink flowing beautifully. So, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to be notified when another video comes out, please hit that bell and get a notification. And I thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.